Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. This video we're going to be talking about picky eaters and how um, you can overcome um, and handle those picky eaters that you may have at your house. So let's get right down to it. situation as a parent and you're holding like a spoon of peas and you're like the enforcer of this child trying to eat this but it's just biting back right well not the enforcer but it was like a rule enforcer I guess you could call it it's a little less like Ugh. but you're struggling to feed this child right and you're so worried that they're not getting enough nutrients or because they're not eating anything okay I have um, actually my niece she loves candy and waffles she's in the chocolate and waffle phase right now and she likes pizza um and she's just kind of not really wanting to eat anything right now right so you have kids in those situations at this point in time both my girls actually Adeline was pretty good but Evelyn extremely picky she wouldn't even try anything she wouldn't even attempt to try anything nothing like that whatsoever sorry I had like a hair fall in my eye <laughs> <laughs> but she wouldn't even uh, even try attempt anything and now with um, what I'm sharing with you and keeping with it staying consistent she will at least be willing to try everything will she eat everything no but she'll at least take a bite of everything and that is like everything to me I don't know <laughs> to get to that point um, I don't know about you guys right okay but Let's go over what a picky eater is, okay? So a picky eater or a fussy eater is when a child refuses um, food often and only eats like a very limited range of food, okay? That's basically the definition of it, okay? Um, and it could be like some picky eaters appear to have like completely lack of food, like interest in food. Lack of interest in food, there we go. Um, and haven't eaten for a long period of time and that kind of worries us. And we want to make sure they're having enough food and a stacking and often, right? Um, so we're worried that they're not getting enough nutrients, right? But at this age group, um, and because picky eaters normally start appearing around the toddler age and around this, 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 this age group, they don't actually need that much nutrients, okay? Um, and when they do eat, their nutrients at this stage is actually stored in their body for one to two weeks, okay? So if you have just like a couple days of bad eating, it's okay. It's all right, okay? Uh, it's nothing to be um, worried about or beat yourself up over. Um, you have to kind of like work with the child and stay consistent of trying to get your child to try new things in a good way, okay? And I'll share some tips in this video, okay? Um, but here's th something that I kind of want to get you to think about. Just one little slice of apple, okay, could actually, in fact, be very filling to your toddler, okay? Um, they do have small stomachs, and every child's stomach is a different size, right? <laughs> so if your child's eating one apple slice and then just kind of like runs away going, no, I'm, I don't want any more food, I don't want this, I, all right, like, Adeline's starting to say when she doesn't like, like she's saying, oh, I don't like this. No, she said, no, she says, oh, I'm full, but she really doesn't like what she has on her plate. So then you go into the conversation, you have to talk to them going, are you actually full? Is this what you like? Um, after they try that little bite, right? So, but just as a reference, if they have a little piece of apple, they could actually be full, okay? So why do kids even become picky eaters? Well, they, um... They become picky eaters um, usually between the ages of two and six, okay? And this is the period where they become aware, okay? Okay, and they become 
individuals and therefore in some degree they want to have some control over their lives and one of the things that they can control is food that goes into their their stomachs right so um refusing food is uh more likely is deciding which food they'll eat is kind of like being like flexing their independence really um so so often at this age they like sameness, okay? Do you have you noticed that in a toddler they need routine? You get out of the routine, they get a little fussy. That's the same with their food. They're really like, okay, I like this. Let's just stick with this. Let's not try anything else. This is good. This makes my tummy feel good. I don't want to try anything else, right? Um, and that's just something that they can control in this stage. It kind of gives them like a good sense of control and safeness, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff changing in their life right now. They're picking up a lot more. Um, they're they're like receiving a lot more information um through their brains now they're like actually like hearing people communicating with those people um their world around them especially if they go to like preschool or something like that is changing constantly like it's like a big change at this stage right and that's really when the picky eaters kind of actually start appearing is when there's so much change they they want to keep the sameness to stay safe in their routine in their life and their day right so um another reason could also be um like the smell of food okay or the taste or the texture of food with Evelyn it was the sound of her chewing she was because uh, of her autism sound and movement are her big things. She has to stay moving and sound cannot be too loud or too soft. Like she had, sound is extremely important, important for her mood, right? So chewing, she came aware of the chewing and that is what got her kind of off food because she was eating everything. And so once I realized that and it was one of her sensories, um, we figured out foods um, where I cooked the foods that were good and healthy for her in a different way. Like, so carrots, we don't just give her a raw carrot. We kind of steam it up a little bit so she doesn't hear the chewing. Um, we took a lot of the meats out of her diet completely because she wouldn't even eat them anyways. And we found plant-based source proteins that she didn't make a lot of sound when she chewed. And she really likes. So you do have to kind of like work with it to figure out what the child's needs are. Is it because the her the atmosphere has changed so much and they want some sameness? Is it the smell of it? Is it the texture of it? Is it the sound of the chewing? You kind of have to like go through this like process thing, process list. And you really the only way to do that is to have food conversations with your child, right? So they sit down at the dinner table together and kind of talk about food talk about food going oh, okay and you really dive in deep on why they don't want to eat this okay so I have some tips here on how you can help your picky eater so of course talking about food is one of them another one is getting the kids in the kitchen okay so if you are making food this is what really got Evelyn into liking food again and trying different foods is because she saw all the foods that she liked going into the dish so like if we made lasagna or pasta like it was like a couple dishes that were like mixed together like a casserole she was in the kitchen she was putting the ingredients in she made it and it also gave her a sense of like pride because she was like oh daddy because daddy would be away at work and daddy would come back and uh, she would be like, oh, daddy, try the supper I made. And he would try it and he'd be like, mm, that's so good. And she would take a spoonful after that and be like, mm, so good. So getting them in the kitchen and actually having them see what's going into their food um, and seeing that it's absolutely everything that they like is a great way to do it as well. Another thing that we've done with Evelyn, because she's a very visual child, is the colored plates that I've mentioned in previous videos. So we have rainbow colored plates, and then we have color themed days. So if she has the red plate, she picks, she gets all the fruits and vegetables that are red for that day, and we just, it's just red themed, okay? Then we also have like a rainbow plate, and so then she can pick different ones. We try and have different variety of fruits and vegetables, in our fridge or growing in our garden that she can actually just go pick. So it's another way to get kids eating. It's actually creating a garden, whether it's inside, very small, or outside. 
I actually have a course on my app right now and, you, and it shows you how you can grow food at, no matter how where you live okay so like an apartment outside it can it shows you how to create a garden with the smallest amount of space and to do it for zero dollars to start off with zero dollars with this garden right okay and it's just they're now learning to grow their food and they everyone thinks it's so cool and Adeline, we go out to the garden and we pick something up and then we literally just put it in our food and they're like, this is so cool. Like I just picked this and now I'm making my food with it. And they thought it was the most incredible thing ever, right? So if you want that, that's down in my app below in the description, okay? Another way is um, definitely select age appropriate food. So lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, you can make, um, you can make very healthy pizza now, okay? I have lots of pizza recipes that are sugar-free, packed filled with nutrients on my app as well. I have over 200 plus recipes on my app right now, okay? Like my kids love quesadillas. There's, we just added uh, for the recipe of the week this week on my app is a sweet potato and cheese quesadilla, super packed with nutrients. My kids love it, your kids will love it too, okay? Um, so just select food appropriate uh, age appropriate food and uh, you can make little pictures and designs that also helps right you can also get them so how I got my kids to eat stuffed peppers is I treated them like jack-o-lanterns so they got to pick whatever face they wanted and we carved like a pumpkin okay like a jack-o-lantern their their face and they each got their own face for their stuffed pepper okay so you can do stuff like that make it fun right um Another thing you do is limit calor high calorie drinks, okay? So this is um, your fizzy drinks. You shouldn't be feeding your child fizzy drinks at this time. Um, it can give them very bad um, as reflex and there's no nutritional value whatsoever in it. Um, but juices and milks, limit that. Just try and keep water because it fills them up and you want them to be hungry for the food rather than, you know, being full over juice, right? Um, you will also want a very strict routine of when, when you're eating. So try and eat at the same time every single day. Um, it gets them in that routine. It gets them in that sameness that they're kind of craving, especially if it's like um, them, them just uh, refusing a little bit of food because of change in their life, okay? Uh, whenever we change in our routine or anything in our life, my kids sometimes are kind of like off on their food it's okay they come back to it in a couple days but if you keep that sameness daily it'll help with the child as well okay it also another tip is respect your child's appetite no matter how small it is okay so Evelyn can sit there and just eat and eat and eat and she'll stop and not eat for a couple hours Adeline she needs a uh, food every hour like a little piece of food every hour she doesn't really sit down for meals every child is different you kind of have to work with the child's needs at that point in time okay so um, respect a child's appetite when they're hungry you feed them if they're not hungry you don't push it right um, but also you need to know that they're not hungry and it's not just because they don't like the food you need to have those food conversations okay um, the next one is don't always offer dessert we actually I actually do not give my children dessert unless they ask for it okay and the dessert is like I have like sugar-free gummy bears or gummy worms we have these little ice cream balls that are completely sugar free that they can have their cookie dough um, ice cream balls um i've made um homemade ice cream um pumpkin cookies um double chocolate avocado cookies they're very healthy snacks okay and they're all sugar free and they can have them whenever they ask for it okay i don't have a specific okay you need to finish all your food on your plate to have dessert no because that's forcing your child to eat or to like to overeat or to undereat, and you can also give them emotional attachment to dessert which is what we don't want okay we're trying not to get emotionally attached to food we're trying to teach them that food is nutrients right you need it for your body to function properly and for you to feel good and happy and great and to have energy to play with your friends right so don't always offer dessert okay and then the next tip I have is make mealtime pleasant Okay, so you want it to be like when you sit down as a family at night, it's it's not always pleasant, right? Especially if you have older kids. <laughs> Emotions of the day can run high, right? But you want to make it as 
as nice of, as a meal as possible. So take away the phones, everything. You're just sitting there talking to your children, getting to know your children, um, and just having that good relationship with them, okay? So um, that's really all I got for you for picky eaters. If you have any... Um, like questions put them below but if you also have more tips with picky eaters put them below as well okay because we're all here in this community or all moms with kids helping each other out right so um if you have any more tips just put them below all right but i'll see you guys next week i hope you guys have a fantastic week